Hello, welcome. I'm Dr. George Machaki. This is um, a, a Marketing uh, 106 uh, Retail Merchandising offered by Harper College. I will be your facilitator uh, for this uh, lecture. We're going to be using concept maps that are either provided uh, in the classroom or if you're taking me fully in an online class, you'll have the link within Blackboard Course Management System. Today we'll be uh, covering Chapter 3. Strategic planning and uh, uh, retailing. Uh, one thing: make sure you read the book, do the homework assignment, get a, a familiarization of the concepts. This is just going to be an overview, just to uh, highlight some of the main points. It's not going to be in depth of uh, uh, without reading the book. You won't understand some of the concepts. I'm just going to re-emphasize what you already read and kind of focus in on some things that you should be aware of. Okay, so let's go. We're using a concept map. These are available to, uh, for you. And we're going to uh, talk about, first of all, the benefits of strategic retailing planning. Anything in business, whether you're uh, uh, doing anything, you have to plan ahead. It just doesn't happen hap uh, haphazardly. You're going to have, a, uh, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, goals, strategic goals, and then you're going to have objectives, how to reach those uh, small steps, strategic goals. So first of all, you got to analyze the requirements for doing business for different types of real, uh, retailers. Depends on your business. Remember, this is an overview, and it's a model that would be utilized for uh, all businesses. Okay, Outline the retailer goals. What are your goals? Is it to increase sales? Is it for awareness? How to differentiate uh, itself from your competitor? What makes you different? What makes your product different than what your competitor? It's okay to have competitions. That's why we're in a free market. Uh, develop an offering that appeals to the group of customers, a specific group of customers that you'll be targeting. Analyze the legal, economic, and competitive envi environment. That is when we do the SWOT, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, analysis, strength, weakness, and opportunity. Strengths and weaknesses within the organization, opportunity are, are outside and threats are outside the organization or forces that uh, uh, help or force me to uh, uh, create a plan to either minimize it or if it's an opportunity, how do I maximize it and utilize it for my advantage of my operation, my retail store. Coordinate efforts at a firm effort. Everyone in the plan should know in your company or retail, even if it's a small business, even if it's your, uh, uh, your own business, what are your goals? What do you want to accomplish? It's like if you're trying to lose weight, you have to be able to have small steps, but ultimately I want to lose 30 pounds, and I really do, okay? Encourage and anticipate avoidance of crises. That's why you're always scanning the outside. What's going on? Remember, a lot of things that, are, some things will happen right away, but a lot of things, you could see it coming down the path, and how do I do risk management uh, control? Okay, so that takes care of that. The next one you're going to, uh, uh, and remember, you're following along with the book. I'm just giving you a quick overview. I'm going to try to keep this under 40 minutes. Uh, elements of retail strategy. Again, you have to, and the book had a real good thing on here, but basically covers situational analysis. What is the situation at this time? You, you know, you're planning for a whole year strategically, but then you have a little thing. What do you need for the next month or next week? Usually you want to do, uh, if I'm looking at some kind of goals for the next uh, two months, okay? Uh, what are your objectives? Okay, so uh, situational, you're looking at the organization mission. Remember, that's the vision that everyone knows, and those are your situation. Maybe it's just awareness right now. I just opened up my business, or maybe it's a new market. Ownership, and, uh, okay, now on this situation analysis, you got to look at your ownership. And you covered this in the introduction of business, sole proprietor, it's uh, me, my own business that I uh, operate, partnership, I have somebody else coming in there, corporations, I sell stocks and shares, I have more people, it allows me to bring more, uh, um, what do you call it, finances, more opportunities, it gives me a little bit longer uh, a lifespan. And limited liability organization is underneath my umbrella that I operate, it's LLC. These two, the corporation and limited liability, and then the corporations, remember, I'm just uh, just uh, reviewing it quickly. You have Chapter S, you have so many shares, uh, or a large corporation like the Motorola, uh, uh, any of the larger ones. It, it got stuck there. Limited liability. These two here, basically, the reason you set up those organizations like that is because if for some reason the organization uh, uh, defaults or is sued as a sole proprietor and a partnership, 
they could, you have unlimited liability, which in uh, essence means that they, if your business cannot sustain the penalty or to pay out, they'll come after your personal assets. When you're under the, uh, a corporation limited liability, it's a way that if my business gets sued or I can't meet my obligations, it's the business you know, uh, if, I, if I could pay off the debts, fine. If not, they take whatever my business is worth, but they can't come after my personal assets, my car, my house, my other things. Okay, so you got goods and services. When I look at this, uh, goods and services from a business perspective is irrelevant. Goods are tangible. Services are intangible. The thing to remember about services is it's only as good as your last time you were served. Uh, goods, you know the quality, how long the, the, it uh, works. It has some tangible assets. The SWOT is basically strength, weakness, and opportunity that you look at your analysis. Okay. The next one, you look at what are your objectives. Is it going to be sales? Is it going to be profits? Is it going to be satisfaction of the, of, of the public and image? Basically, you want all of them at all times, but if you're just starting off, yours is going to be more awareness. After a while, it may be sales. A lot of times, you got a lot of revenue coming in, but you don't make any profit. Profit is after you pay all your expenses and everything else, what's left to have any money left. If I break even, I'm not making any profit. Uh, uh, you know, when a business starts off, it's going to be in that situation. After it's going for a couple of years, you're hopefully making a profit. If not, why work? The business you're making even. You're not making any money. You're just breaking even. You want to, It's like you're not getting a raise. Okay. And image and brand basically works together. Identification of customer. Mass marketing. I go out there and try to get a lot of people. For larger corporations, that's what they utilize. They use all medias. They just put out their ads or something and they get enough people coming in. Either on, uh, uh, what do you call it, social media or anything else. They don't care. Uh, what's happening when you're looking at that's good for large companies if you're selling a product that's general across all populations or all demographics, and it's going to be you know, gasoline, uh, uh, clothesline, or something else everyone needs. What you're looking at is concentrated in niche marketing. Is basically you're looking at a certain demographic of individuals, understand that group, and able to market them specifically to meet them. If I'm doing Generation Z or Baby Boomers, they dress differently. And I'm still in the clothing, but I'm specifically selling clothing uh, uh, to, to that group or uh, items or... Um, uh, uh, entertainment, whatever, specifically for that group, okay? And make your marketing differently. You adjust to different markets, okay? Your overall strategy is controllable variables. I can control certain variables. My message and everything else, uncontrollable variables. Let's take an example. My, uh, uh, something, uh, 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 a client or customer is upset with me, and it goes viral. I can't control it. I try to minimize it, Okay. And uncontrollable uh, variables could be if a recession comes in. I can't stop the recession, but that's uh, uh, what do you call it, systematic across all industries are affected. I'm looking at unsystematic, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, variables that's specifically for my industry or specifically for my uh, store. And it could be just the location I'm in. Okay? All right, this one I just get rid of. Sorry. Now, for those of you who ever looked at any of my uh, uh, recordings, I don't uh, edit unless it's really bad. As you get it, because uh, that's how I get uh, a lot of things done. Okay, now specific activities that you're looking. Remember, we're looking at the elements of strategic man, uh, man, daily and short term. I have to make a uh, thing. So if you have a goal of saying I'm going to have five customers, or I'm going to make twenty thousand dollars a week. How do you achieve that every day? If I don't have any customers coming in, I'm not going to make that twenty thousand dollar goal that I want for the. Uh, uh, for the end of the week, or maybe uh, uh, 80000 for the end of the month. So if I got a rainy day or anything else, how do I make up that, uh, uh, my, uh, what do you call it, my overall activity to get more customers in on the days that uh, are more favorable? You know, if I got a bad weather, no one's going to come out. So on the other days when it's better, I have to up my game a little bit or adjust it or adjust my expenses or adjust something else so I could at least at the end of the month I make my goals. It's hard when you first start off a brand new business because you don't have any historical data. If you look at the places you work in retail, if you look at your manager, he or she's looking, so we should be selling so much on this comparable to what we did last year, uh, other couple of years ago. And if not, how do I make it? Because it's like if you get your paycheck and you know how much your bills are and all of a sudden your boss says you're not working for the next uh, a week, how am I going to make up that shortfall? 
either gets uh, another part-time job or something, have a garage sale. Remember, and retailers are always looking at that. So they're looking at their goals. They have a, a yearly goal. They have a monthly goal or a quarterly goal. Then they have a monthly goal. Then they have a weekly goal. And that all builds all the way up. Now, what kind of control do you have? So I'm looking at the controls, evaluation, and adjustment. Depending on what happens that day, I'm always trying to make it up. If you look at some of the retail stores you go during the week, it doesn't look like they have any business. How, do they, how could they afford this place? But the weekends are where they make the money. And if the weekend hurts, the next weekend I either have some sales, maybe some new advertising. I have to do something or I have to adjust my uh, overall, uh, what do you call it, for lack of better words, my strategic uh, uh, goals through my objectives. All right. And then, like I said, this figure here out of the book is kind of good. I just walked through the whole thing. I just gave you a little explanation. People like the visual. Okay, value course of L.L. L. Bean. Now, L.L. L. Bean, if you look at L.L. L. Bean, their whole value course is outdoor heritage, natural environment, outdoor experience, high quality good, 100% guarantee satisfaction, low prices. I utilize L.L. L. Bean. I like them. No, but it's not for everybody. It's more of like a sporty or a little higher quality. But if you're not in sports, you're not an outdoors person, L.L. L. Bean, some people wear them because they may like the fashion or the uh, clothing line, but not for everything that they do. Respect among all publics. They try to be very respectful. Uh, Long-term perspective, they're envi environmentalists and very, uh, what do you call it, uh, utilizing natural, high-quality products. They try to do as much products as they can here at their uh, uh, U.S. location, but they do bring... Uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, some of the clotheslines, some of the shoes and everything else, higher end, better, uh, maybe from overseas, but they do try to do as much as they can, uh, USA made. Okay, figure, uh, uh, purchasing an existing uh, uh, retail. Now, if I'm looking at, uh, you could read all this. You have two aspects. I could open up a brand new business on my own, find a location, everything else, small shop, but I don't have any historical data. I'm taking a gamble. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm an out-of-the-box thinker. I have to make those decisions. Or if I want, I could buy another business similar to the uh, business I want to open up because uh, I'm familiar with, or I've worked in. And that business, with, uh, you know, how much is it put in for sale? What's the value? What is the season? You're looking at historical data from that uh, retailer. That is good because the stores already has a location. It has some kind of customer flow. You have some historical data, but you may want to change it. You, uh, you know, why are they going out of business? Is it poor quality? Is it a bad location? But you, you know, so be aware of what you have. The business part of a chain. So these are just some questions. Remember, we uh, look at the book to go real good. Now, that's for that. Uh, uh, Consider when to start a new business. Now, when you're looking at a new business, most of us are creative. A lot of people from the age of 18 to about 30, they're still very flexible. They've got ideas. They don't have that baggage. I don't say baggage. I say uh, commitment. I'm not a, you know what I mean? Uh, I don't have uh, uh, house payments or anything else. So I'm kind of, you know, I'm doing fine. But so I could take more of a risk. I'm not going to lose that. I uh, don't have all the responsibilities uh, that people rely on me. You know, if I'm not married or, I'm, uh, or I have a family or, or um, I got dependents or whatever, okay? So you're going to look at that. You're going to look at the plans, take your philosophy of business. We discussed that in class. Uh, the other thing is financial plan. Where are you going to get the money from? You know, it's a little, uh, even though you're buying an existing business, you got to buy it from them. you got to have some money. It's like buying a house. But you're buying the business, but you're also buying the good parts of the business. You're buying the, uh, the, the existing business's uh, clientele list. But now the new ones, you have to create that on your own. So you may need angel investors, or you may have uh, the bank may give you a loan, or your family and friends, or you could go uh, crowdfunding, easy way if people believe in you, and you're talking about paying back uh, as it gets going. So it's not, Or you could just have an e-commerce to start your small business online, and, you know, and then after the business is... Uh, Growing on the online as an e-commerce, then you may go into a brick and mortar store, or you can start off with a brick and mortar store and sell them. You know, I see a lot of stores pop up, brick and mortar. I come in the store, price a little thing, looks kind of nice, but then after uh, six months, a year is gone. 
they did not understand the location, they did not connect with their customer base. There's nothing wrong with that. You remember, when you're looking at a, a new location, like in this one, uh, start a new business, you're looking where your competition is uh, not as much competition, and there's a need. You have to have a need within the market. That's part of the whole business. Some of you already had introduction to business, or you had uh, marketing, so that kind of help you out. In the financial plans, where you're going to have the money. One thing is to have the money. Again, if I tie this in, if I'm looking for a new apartment, house, I had the money for the down payment, everything else. Okay, I got enough money going. The bank says, good, you have all this information. Now, could you sustain for the next five years to pay back or at least keep your business afloat? Okay, and then organizational detail you know, the list of jobs, how many employees, usually it's small businesses yourself, and most of your employees will be friends or families, and how much you're going to pay them, and outline your account inventories, what are the goods that you're going to be supplied, you got to have inventory. In business, you're going to have to have a line of credit. It, uh, most businesses take six months, you buy your inventory six months uh, in advance. So keep your inventory small until you understand what your customers want. After you get that little niche, then you could start, okay, let me try the next demographic or next niche, or now I buy this stuff. Because then after your first year, if you make it to your first year, you have a general idea of what is required. It's no different when you first move out. I don't know what my rent is. I don't know what I'm going to pay. I think I'm going to make it. I'm looking at whoever I'm moving in, and to that place, here's the electricity, here's the gas. So you kind of make your assumptions, okay? And a lot of times, if you get any money, always borrow more than you need. You don't have to use it. But because the biggest things where business has problem is uh, of, uh, cash flow. Okay? Now, leadership. When you look at a leadership, what do you have? The leadership uh, lesson for retail executive. Be, uh, uh, flexibility. you got to be flexible. Never give up. You know, things don't work out. Hey, let's go. Pick up. That's part of learning. That's part of what's the challenge. But once your business is successful, You'll do fine because now, look, you could work for somebody else. That's fine. You could work up the corporate ladder and everything else, and you'll be successful. You'll have a, a decent life. If you want to get a little more money, have more control, rich, open up more businesses, then you have to do it as a small business. And you may not have to, you know, they say a lot of businesses open up because they want to work for somebody. You're always working for the customer. Customer is your, uh, uh, your employer, for lack of a better word. But you don't have no one coming uh, after you. But you have to be a self-starter. You have to be flexible. You have to, they're going to laugh at me. Don't worry, they're going to laugh at you anyway, as long as they can laugh at me all the way to the bank, okay? All right, so, you know, bosses, uh, your customer, be open-minded. Dream. See, you know, you have to, in your mind, visualize what I want to be. A lot of people, I want to be right up there. You're not going to get there. you got to have small steps and work your way up. So, uh uh, work cautiously, okay? Retail strategy, overall plan for one year duration, outline your mission, we talked about that in the class, overall specific activities, control mechanism, control mechanism is like your checkbook. And controls are you set small goals. I'm going to meet so many customers. I'm going to uh, uh, bring so many. Uh, I want to advertise. I want to do some promotion. I want to at least, within the next two months, uh, build up like a base, maybe, uh, uh, depends on the business, you know, or at least break even, or at least make 10% uh, profit after my revenue is coming in. Okay, select the kind of goods or services establishment. Remember, is it durable goods, non durable goods, uh, service establishment? Uh, 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 you know, like personnel, uh, uh, amusement, repair, and, you know, hotels, or uh, even if you do, like, uh, renting an office or renting space in your room. That's something to do in a house. A lot of people do that, okay? So, remember, I'm going over because I'm going to keep this under 40 minutes. Look at the book. I'm just giving you something to think about at this. I'm giving you an overview uh, uh, of what the chapter is about. Some typical financial investments for uh, uh, retail ventures. It's okay, uh, and this one works kind of good. What are you going to need? Are you going to buy the property? Are you going to rent the property? Are you going to buy your equipment? Are you going to lease the equipment? Are you going to uh, buy your inventory? Are you going to make your inventory? Fixtures, you need fixtures. You need a wall. You need a sign. Uh, uh, you need cash register. Even though you could do a lot of things with uh, credit cards or with your cell phone, you could just scan the thing. you got to look kind of professional, even in a small business. Personal salespeople, right now you may not have some uh, 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 salespeople or um, uh, cashiers. You're going to have someone to take the money in, you know, personal drawing accounts. Uh, you got to have a business. Take it away from your business. Start setting up, saying here's uh, uh, a game consulting or here's a game hot dog stand or game uh, a clothing line. Have a business, have a check. This, when you're dealing with people, have business cards made up, have some kind of logo, you know, have a website already. You have to have that all set up 
thinking about it before you open up, okay? And the equipment sources are from the personal bank, manufacturer credits, loans, and everything else. So all this information here I already have in here. Do you see what I'm talking about? Uh, inventory sources. I just did it the, the same thing. Now here's just a breakdown of total investments, and you could get this. I'll uh, come in. And, uh, I sent the uh, the author did a real nice job on here. And look, you're looking at money. You lease a building for uh, sixty thousand. Your inventory. You got It's like when you move in. How much you gonna keep in your cupboard? How much inventory you need? Depending on what your business is, depending what you're doing, and we'll discuss that a little bit more. Replacement parts, you know, as, as you buy something, you, you may only have one product line. Product line is basically what you're doing. The product mix is different product lines. If I look at a, a, in a store, and I'm just talking general, I assume you may know some of this, the author covered a little bit of it. So if I'm looking at a, a, at a product mix, if I go Office Depot, Right, the staples for lack of a better word. What's their product uh, line? They have uh, computers, they got paper, they have stationery, they got pens, they got printers. Those are all different product lines. But overall, the product mix is basically uh, office supplies. Okay, so we've got that done. What do we have in here? Image and position. Image and position. What's an image? How are you perceived by the customer? What the image do you want? Quality good? Look, I can walk into the store retail, look at the first price, and I go, oh, my goodness, a little high here. I already know it's a high end. I can walk in the store and see the prices. Oh, this is what I could do. What did a customer see? How you set up your display? How you set up your pricing when they pick it up? You could have a favorite. Look, you know how to do this at your own business when you're doing it now when you walk into the store. If I go into Macy's, it's a lot different than going into Walmart. I already know Walmart got a brand image, low cost. I go to Target, a little bit higher. I go to Macy's, way higher. And, and the goods are better, better quality, okay? Uh, positioning, mass merchandising. Are you selling other people's out there? A little bit of everything. Or do you have a niche? If I look at niche mer mer merchandising, very specific customer base. The only one for a coat. The only I'm only targeting Generation Z. I'm always targeting uh, or uh, uh, Generation Y or baby boomers. That's my niche. I want them all, but I know one niche that I know uh, though because I'm familiar with it. My customers and everything is a reflection of that. Rather than mass market, I just uh, Walmart, mass market, anybody. Come on in. We don't care because we carry a variety of things. They're department store. They're large. If I go to a uh, uh, Kroger, or look, if you go to uh, Mariano food they have all different kinds of you go to Whole Foods basically very more uh, organic a uh, different type different type of niche but that's their product okay uh, and they had an article here I'm not gonna click on it but there's a, a site American Girl doll who are they targeting you know very customized uh, expensive dolls for kids it's a collector's item you could sell that okay but I'm not gonna go into that now I didn't have time uh, 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 your author has it in a book Follow the link. Gives you ideas. Oh, I'm not getting any. Remember, part of the class, don't always look at the homework and everything else. You're going to go into retail merchandising. You're going to go and open up your own store. You want to sell your own product. You're working as a department manager. You have to be able to understand these concepts to be successful. So look at this and say, just because you got a degree, I got a degree here from Harper College in retail merchandising or, 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 or uh, retail uh, or fashion merchandising, whatever you get your degree from, for, okay, that's a degree. That means you have some knowledge and you could apply it. If you just have definition, what good are you? That's what you're learning here, okay? Okay, select a retail strategy. Okay, and, and then this one, price. Is it uh, on price? Is it on service? Is it a different product line that you're selling? You don't have to sell everything. And who are you selling to? Well, I'm just going to sell them. A, that's fine. That's your men's clothing line. That's who you're selling. Well, I'm going to sell to an African American. I could come in there as a Polish person, but my main focus is clothing lines or everything else for uh, that African Americans will like. Well, not stereotyping. Generally, I'm selling to the Hispanic uh, population. Okay, I already a uh, 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 Mexican. I already from uh, uh, what do you call it, Chile. It doesn't make it. It's still underneath the same. Uh, they speak the same uh, uh, language, but their customs are different. Their uh, uh, background, their cultures are different. How am I going to target into that? Okay, and here's the figure. Let me see. I forgot what the figure. Okay, upscale traditional stores, and this is kind of power real uh, realtors, you know, and price and service discount stores, membership clubs. What are you selling? Are you selling products? Are you selling services? Or are you uh, customized? Who are you doing? You have to understand that. Okay, so let's see what do we have there. Oh, we're doing pretty. Ooh. 
I think I got another few minutes. Okay, so let's go. Okay, so the other thing you're going to look about is retailer's location. We're going to be located. You have to be located where you, you think your customers are coming. If I'm mass marketing, I want to be with a lot of people. If I'm going to be focusing, let's say, on um, uh, uh, young couples. You know what I mean? No, they don't have to be married. It's just uh, on the younger, you know, between 25 and 35. They're usually in an apartment building. I'm not saying, you remember, I'm, uh, I'm generalizing. Where there's a lot of apartments, because they're, they're very flexible. They're still working, but they're very mobile. They move around. They don't want to be tied down to a house. They want to say, hey, I'm, I'm working here. I'm going to move over here. So where does the larger population I do? But if I'm going to a certain niche, if I'm going to go for high-end clothes, where am I going to go? I may go Barrington. I may go Inverse. You know, you know what I mean? I'm looking at an area like Forest, or I'm looking at an area where it's highly, if I'm looking to sell to Korean, Buffalo Girls, so I'm looking to sell to uh, to Jewish uh, individuals. I'd go more for Skokie. I'm not, look, there's other people in that area, but there's a, pro, uh, a predominantly a larger amount of population I'm trying to uh, target. If I'm trying to get more of a younger teenage, I try to go closer to the high schools, okay? Uh, your goods and service, your promotional efforts, you, you know, your price, pricing makes a big difference. Like we discussed in class about the iPhone versus Samsung, the value added. You, you know, how much you get them in a basic price, how do I upsell them to the next level? It can't be like 20, uh, you know, if something's 100 bucks and I say, okay, you just got all these other uh, options and it's going to be 200, too big of a jump for a person. If it's 100 bucks, you know, for another $25, we could get this. Now you're bringing them up step, steps. And then, oh, yeah, okay, it's only 25 more dollars. And then you divide it and, and you know, that's part of the whole upsell. You know, some customers just want a basic model. I want a basic model, I want nothing else. But you got the basic model, you're going to spend this much. How do I bring you up to the next uh, uh, level or, the, you know, with some additional features or function? And as long as it pertains to that individual. Okay, now develop an overall, you know, we talked about controllable locations. You can control that. Management of pricing. Can you control it? Depends what's happening. Right now, a lot of people buy a lot of stuff from China. Nothing wrong with that. You, get, uh, you know, it depends on the quality and everything else. But you give them the specifications, you do fine. Now that you have the Trump administration, look, I don't care what Trump's doing. I'm looking at the rules. He's got a, uh, he's got trade uh, uh, protective tariffs coming on there. So now, it's okay, the cost is going up. That's something that I was able to control by low, bringing my, su uh, my, my supply in. Now my prices are going up. Maybe I start looking for a U.S. supplier. You see how that works? I had to make an adjustment. I see it's coming. It may be work out, maybe in the next month, but you don't know. You have to anticipate. If it works out, fine. So in the meantime, I'm buying a little bit here, and I'm trying. So do not put all your eggs in one basket. You have different suppliers, or you're making your own good. Maybe you're just changing. If this prices go up, I try to substitute something else, or I try to find a little different market that works with it. So some of the uncontrollable ones, uh, you know, that the author talked about, your cus your consumers, they like it, they don't like it, they change, they move on, or the neighborhood changes, or their, your demographic changes, a new competitor comes in, or if it leaves, that's good, technology changes, everyone's with social media and everything else, so, you know, I mean, they all want free apps, they all want to talk to me online, they want to have that interaction, they don't want one-way talking, they want an interactive communication, so as a business, I have to be interactive, uh, economic condition, right now, the, uh, whether you like it or not, with the new with the Trump administration, there's confidence, we're doing good, all you gotta do look at international, a lot of countries are having problems, you know, they're kind of stagnant, U.S. is doing good, okay? All right, so uh, seasonal, this is seasonal, you know, I'm selling winter cold. Look at the uh, Christmas trees. How, where, where the heck, the, you know, I'm just throwing that out. That's more of a Christmas, or if I'm doing for, uh, you know, so that's good. Or I'm selling uh, a Dairy Queen, more in the, su uh, in the summer, ice cream and everything else. But what are they doing in, in the winter? They still sell hot dogs and other stuff, or uh, uh, birthday cakes, uh, ice cream cakes. It, the business is not as uh, uh, lucrative, but it's enough to pay for my investment to pay the rent, the heat, and everything else. I'm breaking even. I make more of my money in the summertime. I use that money so at the year end when they go Black Friday, a lot of businesses say Black Friday, it means they're making it those last three or four weeks when people are buying for the holiday, shopping for whatever reason, those are the weeks that pre makes my strategic goals and I make I'm out of the I'm out of the red I'm in the black that's why you call it Black Friday if I can't make it there I should be able to be already there before the uh, the season comes but if not a lot of businesses they make their numbers 
exactly at that last time where they call it Black Friday. And the reason for that is because they were in the red and now because of all the sales and everything else. And plus, I got rid of a lot of inventory. Even though I reduced my costs, I'm not, I'm not making as much as profitability as I would during the year on those items as a markup, but I'm still not losing money, but I'm selling more of it. You, you know, uh, the prices went down by selling more of the quantity, and I get rid of old inventory, and I'm bringing new inventory. So my store is not stagnant. Okay, the next one, the cost control. You're looking at bad cost. You, you price it too high, or you price it too low. Private labels. Private labels are pretty good. If I'm looking at private labels to reduce national manufacturer uh, brands, I, I have that. I have the private labels to get them into the store. And then I have you know my own pri uh, 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 label or non-private or like a generic brand. So you bring them in with the light. I bring in Nikes. I'm selling shoes. I bring in Nikes, all the, the big names. And they come in. But then I have an off-brand that's similar with a price uh, or a new off-brand that may not be as noticeable. But People, oh man, it almost looks like a Nike. It doesn't have the Nike name on it, but it's functional, it is similar, and it brings people in, or you have your own uh, uh, clothing line that you're doing. So here's the, remember, you need something to bring them into the store. If I can't bring them in, I can't sell to them. So I bring them in, certain items, uh, at their low pricey, and then I try to either sell my own. You know, reduce uh, uh, product. Uh, yeah, uh, you don't want people to steal from you. So you got to be careful on your stealing. Small business is easy because you watch everything. Larger business, people are really crafty. Okay, obtain the best net price and focus on uh, uh, a promotional and trade incentive. Remember, the more I, if I buy a larger quantities, I get discount. If I uh, pay them with cash, I get discount. If I buy in advance, I get discount. Those trade discounts are because uh, the manufacturer or the war, uh, wholesaler, they basically want to get rid of their product to give it to you for a deal. Just because you get a discount, make sure you could be able to sell it. If I got a good price on it, but I get stuck with it, it's no, it doesn't make sense for me. If I buy a thousand of these and there's no way I could sell a thousand, then why buy them? I don't care how much you discount, I'm not making any money. But you could discount it because they like you, you got a good deal, you buy it, and then you try to sell off the bunch to other retailers. Now you become the wholesaler retailer. It's part of business. Just think about it. If I got it, how do I, uh, how do I, I keep for myself and sell the rest of somebody? That's what a co-op basically does. Supply and chains, low prices, proper employee. Make sure your employees are utilized. You have the right employees to customer service, smiling. But also, a lot of your employees are younger employees. They're on the social media. They like to tweet, uh, Twitter. They like to use some of the social media. So you create a social media. And say, hey, look, in the slow, uh, in the slow time. Answer these uh, questions or answer this. Or some people want to uh, work at home. They work halfway, half time at the office, the other time when you answer the phone. A lot of these call centers when you answer, I know there is somebody ho at home working there. They, I don't know they're at home. Sometimes I hear the kids crying and say, are you working at home? Yeah, yeah. But they're still working. They're still functional for you, but they have the flexibility to be at home and still be a, a good employee because they're answering questions for you 24-7. Okay, that's when businesses are open 24-7 because of, of the e-commerce. Okay, retail strategy. What makes you different? If you, Look, Mariano's different than uh, uh, Whole Foods. Mariano's different than Aldi. Mariano's different than Jewel. Do you know what I'm talking about? Mary, I'm talking about the, just the food, even though it's a component. A Walmart has a food component. Even Walmart has everything. So when you're looking at your produce, for lack of better words, it's retail, you still have to look at Walmart section they have. So I have something more. I have better customer service. I have a better quality of uh, good. People don't mind paying the, uh, the higher quality, not excessive, as long as they feel they have value. Okay, so let's see what we have in here. Okay, you got to look at the legal. Store location. You know, you got to look at zoning. You look at blue laws. You look at environmental. What are the environmentals? You, you know, I can't have the lights on. I got to have certain lights. I can't have no bright lights. I can't have a neon light. I got to have a little sign. You look at uh, local ordinances, leasing it or mortgaging it or buy the property. These are all considerations for the store when you first open up. So you may go in an area... You say, I got a good deal on a store. I want a, 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 a client I was working with, they had a store 
uh, um, what do they call it? They want to do a winery, you know, to sell wine and everything else. Oh, pretty good. But the location they were at was next to a, a, uh, a little Caesars and a, and a little, uh, what do you call it, a bar. Uh, not a bar, uh, a liquor store. Hey, come on, if I'm going to go wine and everything, high-end wine, I'm going to buy my pizza at a little Caesars. Nothing wrong with a little Caesars if you're working. I buy a little Caesar. I'm not going to go into the into the, uh, the store that has wine and going to buy a, a, a $40, $100, $200 bottle of wine to eat with Little Caesar. Location is bad. Good store. I got a good price on it. it it's in a bad, it's in the crowded. Do you see what I mean? So you got to look at who's your customer, who's the location on that. Okay, uh, uh, managing the business, who's going to manage the business? You got to look at licensing pres- uh, uh, provisions, personal laws, antitrust laws, franchise agreement. We'll talk about that if you had into the business. You know, franchise, I've got a good business. I'm a franchisor. I want to expand. I could open another business or I sell my ideas and they pay me royalties on their sales. You know, business taxes, Cook County taxes a little higher, Lake County a little bit less. It's not only the county, then you had the municipalities one. Recycling laws, what a recycling thing. Some you have to recycle left in Chicago, no more straws. So I have a restaurant. What am I going to do with straws? I can't, it's going to be illegal. What am I going to do with paper cups? There are no longer paper cups allowed, okay? Oh, we got it all done. Holy mackerel. I feel like I, I kind of fit. I don't know how much time I have. Let me just bring this down. So basically, this is, this, remember, in this class, you're learning. This is just a general. The book does a good job. Look at the links. Look at the author's blog. Has different things. That's current on there. Those are read things. Look, you're, not, uh, uh, you're taking this course here. This is just one aspect. Are you going to be good? No. Uh, you remember everything? No. But at least you in your mind, oh, i got to think about this. I never thought about this. You're looking at areas that you should be looking out for. Let me see. That's why I bring this down. You're looking, all this, all the, what you're learning is what I should have. I didn't think about it. We all have good ideas. We open up, then you go, oh, my goodness, I didn't think about marketing. I didn't think about the location. Man, it's a pretty bad location. I signed for a three-year lease. How the heck do I get out of it? All those should be considerations part of your strategic plan before you go, do I buy a new business or do I buy an existing business? All right, let's see how many minutes I have in here. Let me just glance on this real quick. 36 minutes. Excellent. I'm going to need 40 minutes. That's my thing. Remember, you can always stop me, go backward and forward. This is just a quick overview. Make sure you read the book, and then you should do look at the webs. The author has a lot of good sites. You can look at it. You know, you don't have to study them. You just be exposed to them. So, man, I could do that. I could create that kind of a web. I could see how he's doing the web, uh, that business is doing the, uh, uh, their uh, uh, e-commerce. Try to find a business closer to what you want to open up or what you're managing. Look at, there's nothing wrong with you. That's stealing your idea. You walk in, it's open public. You go in there, hmm. Oh, man, I like this layout. See how many customers are coming in. And don't look at one day. Look at different days. Oh, I see they're more busy and sad. How do they handle it? Where do they register? Oh, what kind of display? What are they bringing in? Okay, remember, every, you'll get more out of this. So right now, I'm done. Uh, again, uh, thank you for, uh, this is Chapter 3, Strategic Plan and Retail uh, uh, and Retailing. Uh, you've taken this course, uh, Marketing uh, 106 is Retail Merchandising, offered by Harper College. My name is Dr. Jordan Machaki, and I'll see you in uh, Chapter 4 uh, recording. Have a nice day, and always be creative, be flexible, be aware, look at your competitors, look at your competition, look at your customers. Don't take them for granted. Things are changing. To be successful, you have to be flexible. All right, I'll see you later. Goodbye.